Okay, we're doing our latest podcast. I think this is our 10th. It is the beginning of September, which usually means for us uh, the um, beginning of another school year. But since our kids are now all done with school, it really doesn't mean that. And it doesn't mean that Bella is going back to work either because she's not working anymore. Uh, so, uh, we're going to talk about a couple things, maybe talk about that, about, uh, Bella's, uh, life at home and how that is going. And also we thought we might talk about, um, our level of honesty, uh, with each other in terms of the disease and whether, um, Bella wants me to be completely honest about her symptoms and whether I am being that way and, that balance of trying to figure that out. So let's start with that. You were just saying, honey, that uh, you don't think I'm being too brutal in terms of honesty, right? No, I don't think you are. And also, I'm not so far gone that I don't recognize my own deficiencies because I do. And is that hard? I mean, that's a big question in my mind a lot of the time. Like, how hard is that? Um... Like, it, does that depress you? Um, I would say the knowledge doesn't depress me, but the result of the disease depresses me in that I have a very difficult time locating stuff. I can still, I mean, I'm still very capable. If it weren't for that, I wouldn't even know I had Alzheimer's. But the fact is I can never find my car keys. I can never find, you know, where I put things. It's not like I forget in general. I forget about those. I forget, like, where I put my, the immediate response to forgetting something. I remember a lot of stuff, and I probably repeat myself a lot, which I don't realize, but I'm still capable of grocery shopping and driving my dog on for her daily drives through the mountains, and I walk my dog, and everybody in the neighborhood knows me as the lady who walks her dog every day. I grocery shop. I, tr- I, go, I drive back and forth and different, to different locations, and I never get lost. Um, I'm not really sure, you know, I'm, to be honest, I'm sure it's going to get worse, but right now I'm probably not as in bad shape as a lot of people who don't have Alzheimer's but just are knuckleheaded. So, you know, I don't know. I think that's true, um, but it is hard. I mean, um, just the daily... Uh, Keeping track of the phone, the car keys, the wallet, the credit card, and so on, um, you know, can be a challenge and it can be really frustrating. Um, You know, on the other hand, my brother at our recent family reunion left his car keys on top of our car and almost, you know, had to like call a cab or something to take him back seven hours to his house. So, uh, you're not the only one. That's that's true. And also, I, I obviously can't see what other people see. I just see myself in my own way. And I think that um, that keeps me from feeling like there's something wrong with me. I don't, I don't see myself the way other people see me. So when I'm being knuckleheaded and forgetful and like I forgot my glasses at the family reunion and they're now being mailed to me, but um, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see my knuckleheadedness. So I don't see myself going downhill very quickly. So when you're at home, when you're like sitting around, uh, I sit or around okay, much. okay, I'm not. I don't mean that. But sometimes you're resting, hanging out, you I, know, listening to the news or uh, checking things out online, and spending I mean, time you, with my rabbit, and spending time with beans. Do you feel sick, or do you feel, um, you know? Uh, less than you, you you used to be, or disabled, or and or do you feel sad about that, or do you, is that like not part of, you know, your daily feeling? Um, I don't I don't feel sad, and I don't recognize that I'm crazy 
so it doesn't I mean the thing that bothers me the most is that I no longer have a job and I no longer make money and that is a that is a uh, oh, a problem in our family because I was working and had a good job and I really wish I could have kept that job and I feel like I could have kept that job had there been a little adaptation adaptations as far as what I could and couldn't do I I am not um, f- for, I'm not as far along um, in the disease as some people might be I still know where to go and how to get there and I still I, I think with a more understanding um, administration, you could have you could still be working. I you think could so have, too. I mean, I I think that's possible, and with with some help that they could have provided, but they chose not to. Right. Um, I I definitely think that that you know is possible. On the other hand, there was going to come a time when that wouldn't be possible. I mean, that's. But you the, know, but wait a second. I've read a lot about this disease for obvious reasons and I've talked to people who are experts on this disease and I could be in the state I'm in right now for 20 years I could not it's possible that this is as bad as it's going to get and you know that's unrealistic to like hope for that but it is I mean I don't feel like I'm sick Right, you don't feel that way, but the but the fact is, you are, and that um, I mean, he, this is part of my brutal honesty, and I don't know if you want to hear this, but uh, but I don't. No, uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I like to be living in my little fantasy world where everything's always going to be the same. Well, I I think that's true, and and you you wouldn't have been able to do that at work. I mean, I'll just say that much. I mean that. It would have been in your face that you weren't performing uh, up to the level that you had performed to in the past, and it, it and it, and now. Except, honey, I worked at I stayed at work and had the disease for several months, and nobody even noticed it. I okay, but your identify. supervisors did notice it. No, I they mean, didn't. Yes, cause, because you, there was all this criticism coming from your supervisor who, yes, was difficult and yes, was a B-I-T-C-H, but, um, you know, that wouldn't have happened in the past because you were screwing up more than you had in the past. That is, that is actually I think true. screwing up is too strong. Okay, but what she was remarking on were things that she noticed that you wouldn't have done had you not had this disability, had you not had Alzheimer's. But, you know, if I had had um, um, an aid, which is I'm entitled to legally, I could have stayed in that job and continued to stay in that job for another 10 years. Well, like I said, if they had worked harder, you know, to make it possible, I think it would still be possible. I do too. But that doesn't mean that nothing was happening because something was happening and it's something that's easy you know it's a lot easier not to pay close attention to those things when you're at home uh you know than it would be if you were driving up and you know trying to do a pretty demanding job every day well i disagree with that to be honest because um i i did that job for many years and I was very good at it, and for many months, nobody even knew that I had Alzheimer's until I told them. So my, my behavior or my capability was not in question until I identified myself. In fact, um, the, 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 my supervisor was a part of the problem. If you have somebody who's like... Le- you know, leering over your shoulder all the time and and making it very difficult for you to do your job without feeling insecure about it, I probably would still be there. If that supervisor hadn't come, I could have continued on. But there was definitely a there was definitely a plan to to make it difficult for me to stay in that job. Yeah, I agree with all that. 
Um, okay, so... And I was very good at that job. I don't <laughs> care what anybody says. I still get calls from students who want advice about stuff. I don't appreciate that, but I, it is something that still happens. And I'm still, you know, I'm still very capable of doing many things. You are, and you were great at it. Um, so uh, let's move on back to our original subjects. My pets. Uh, um, <laughs> which was not the pets, uh, but was, um, you know, uh, my level of honesty with you about what I observe as far as the progression of the disease. That's one thing. And well, also, uh, talk to me about that because you don't talk to me about stuff like that. I want, I want to know what the progression is. Well, we, uh, it's true we don't talk about it in detail. I mean, I, I think some, sometimes you ask me Am I crazy? if you're getting worse. Uh, you know, um, originally when this started happening, when your symptoms started manifesting themselves, you asked me to tell you when you repeated yourself and that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, I, I did that a little at first. I long ago gave up doing that. Um, you know, that is just kind of part of who you are now. Well, let me ask you, do I repeat myself a lot? Quite a lot. I wish more people would repeat themselves a lot because <laughs> it would make it easier to understand what they're trying to say. It's not, you know, <laughs> I, it doesn't bother me. It's not, I'm ju- no, it's I'm not just bad. It I, isn't bad. It isn't bad. And that, that's why there's really no need to, uh, you know, point it out. I mean, it does help to confirm things. It's funny because I'm someone who a lot of times will say things to just to make to, to confirm them, just to make sure that everything's clear, you know. And then people sometimes get annoyed, like our kids. Like we already <laughs> talked about that, you know, of course, and, and so on and so forth. So for me, uh, I you know, it's kind of reassuring a lot of times when you repeat stuff. I don't have a problem with it. It's like. You, yeah, a, you could use a little bit of that repeating stuff. <laughs> but I do do that. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I do that. I do that. Um, but yeah, no, it's not bad, but it is there and it is a sign. It is a symptom that there is um, cognitive decline. Well, I'm still very, I can drive anywhere without getting lost. In fact, I drive my dog around the mountains, which is, you know, windy and many different roads, and I've never gotten lost, and um, I still cook really well. I can do it with my eyes closed if I wanted to. I clean, I take care of my plants, um, which I love, my plants, and I just think that it's possible I'll be in this phase for a good long time. And if I'm not, I'm not. But as at this point, my symptoms are not, I don't think, as bad as, as what is expected. Let me ask you, when you're doing these things uh, that you do uh, most days, like... Uh, Take Pepper for a long drive and uh, do stuff around the house, clean up, um, cook. you know, cook. Um, uh, I have lots do you of company. Feel... People come by and visit me all the time. Okay, I, I don't know about lots of company. Yes, but Sophia comes over. Um, sometimes our niece stops over. And spends a couple days with us. Okay, but I, I don't think it's accurate to say we have company all the time I mean a lot of times you're here by yourself but you never that you, you never normal. minded that no, I mean I like that y- you always preferred that yes it's true. so that's not but so what I was gonna get at was a ha- you know how are you how is your mood like how are you feeling that's, that's sort of a big question mark in my mind when you're here each day and I'm at work how are you feeling? I feel normal. I don't feel like I have a disease. It's sometimes I totally forget that I have the disease. I do the things around the house that I enjoy doing and what I've always done. 
that has never changed. I still do what I've always done. I still cook, I still clean, I still organize, I still do laundry, I still walk the dog, and, and all sorts of things. And I still boss you around to get things done that I want to have done. Does time drag for you? No, because I have my babies. I have my dog and my bunny, and I spend a lot of time making sure they know how much I adore them. Mm-hmm. And That's, they're they're very they're very good animals. They're just the best. They are. And then um, you know, I, I I guess when you were diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it wouldn't have occurred to me that you know, the key to your contentment was going to be our pets. But I think that that is really true. Well, I've always been an animal lover. You know that. Their v- animals are very important to me. Even animals that I don't have a relationship with. I'm very protective of animals in general. I get very upset if an animal is being abused. And um, very upset. And I just feel like that people shouldn't shouldn't hurt animals. Right. And if I see something like that happening, I can't stop myself from doing something to stop it, which is not good because sometimes the people who are injuring their animals would be happy to injure me, but I don't think about that. So one thing that weighs on your mind uh, in, this, in our current circumstances is our finances, right? It's a huge weighing on my mind. Which is why I want to find some way to make money. But I would one thing I would say about that is that you know we've always been short of money. Uh, finances have always been an issue. It's never like oh yeah we've got we're we're, we're fine <laughs> we're doing good you know we're not worried about it you know we've always had debt of whatever sort student loans and so on. Um, Raising you know, children. I mean we've. I can't really think of a time when I wasn't thinking, uh, geez, you know, we don't have enough to pay for what we're intending to pay for. Is that a hint to me to stop buying stuff from Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hint at that. I would just have to say it flat out. <laughs> stop. Okay, stop. I will say Please this. Please stop. I love Amazon. <laughs> I don't even have to leave the house, and I get what I want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, that, I mean, you know, you're feeling like uh, it's a bummer. Uh, we're not making enough money yeah, because I lost I'm my job. I mean, that. that, okay. That re- but that's wait, not, there's so nothing you know, different in that. No, my paycheck would have made a huge difference in our, in our family life had I still been getting it. It would. It would. And that but, is, um, that's going to be You know, a we just have to adjust to this. You know, my guess is we're going to adjust to this. We're going to do what we need to do, and we'll kind of be in the situation that we've always been in, which is short, short on cash, you know, but not bankrupt. Um, would bankruptcy benefit us in any way? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just know that um, we have compromised on a lot of things to keep our lifestyle the way we have always had it. We've never had a lot of money to do anything extravagant, but we have a really nice house that's older than God and um, probably needs a lot of work. It does need a lot of work, which we're not going to be doing probably. But um, money is important to me because I want to be able to provide a good environment for my family and my animals, which are part of my family. But I do feel like, you know, some if there's some way I could make money, I would want to. If there's some way I could make money. I'm pretty artistic. Not only am I a great cook, but I'm also, I mean, if you ever came to my house, you would see how everything is so, um, you know, works together well. Sorry, the phone rang and I was just hanging it up. Um, yeah, you are very artistic and I do want you to start doing some art. You know, I think that that is a fantastic outlet for you and something that, um, 
you know, could be really good. And uh, who knows? Maybe you'll start selling art for lots of money. Yeah, well, I would like to... I would like... My first thought was to make weather vanes because I really feel like they've lost their glory and they shouldn't have, especially with the weather being the way it is these days. Having a weather vane would be a really nice thing to have. And they're very attractive. So, you know, there's a possibility that I'm going to start participating in some ironworks. Um, and also, I feel like... Um, I could make gigantic statues out of tin that are um, artistically beautiful, like the types of things you can get in Mexico. Um, and I am actually a very good photographer. I worked at a newspaper for several years as a photographer, won a couple of awards as a photo photographer. I have a fantastic camera, so I could very well make money by taking photographs. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know why you can't do all those things. Well, I probably can. I just am very, I don't know. I feel like I'm not, I'm not adequate because I have this disease. And so that makes you hesitate to take the steps to, yeah. you know, actually go from thinking about it to doing it. You know what I really need is one of those little magic pills that make you happy and not, not like, you know, overly, like, crazy acting. Not like if you were doing bad drugs. But if you were doing something that, if I could take something that would make me feel energetic. Because that's one of the things that this, this disease does is it makes you tired. Or maybe it's just me, but I get tired. I, you know, I sort of, like get tired and it's not like me to be tired I'm a very energetic person without the disease but you do so you do feel tired a lot of the time I do and I'm not sure why is that a disease symptom I think it is I don't you can't think it is it either is or it isn't it is so you know that for sure I know that that I've seen that with I'm, me but it could no be. I mean I know I've seen it about Alzheimer's that people get tired easily? Yes. But you know what? This is the biggest bummer of all. I was swimming every day in the Y pool and loving it. I'm a water person. I'm a swimmer. And then the worst thing that could possibly happen happened. I got swimmer's ear. And I can't go swimming until it's completely cleared up. I still have an ocean in my ear from it. It'll, you, that'll be cleared up soon, I I'm hope, sure. I hope so. But when I was swimming, I was l more energetic. Swimming did not tire me out. Swimming just, you know, energized me. Right. But I haven't been able to go in the water. I bought earplugs, and I bought um, several kinds of earplugs. I bought earplugs that say you will not hear a rock and roll band with these earplugs in your ears. That's crap, let me tell you. <laughs> I have those earplugs in my ear when I'm driving my dog around the mountains, and she barks at everything. And I can assure you that my hearing is probably not as good as it used to be because she barks so much. Well, um, so you're bringing up something that I, I mean, and something else you said about uh, feeling inadequate. I mean, is that a reason why... Sometimes you don't get out or you don't want to get out and do things. Like, for example, for, uh, over Labor Day, we went to a family reunion on my dad's side. But you resisted. You didn't want to go. And I had to really force the issue. Um, and even with swimming, you know, I pushed you a lot to do that. You finally did it. You loved it. But... Um, you know, you kind of have to be pushed, I think, now to do, to actually get out of the house and do things. Well, and I'm not sure if that's because you're tired or because you feel hesitant because no, of the Alzheimer's or no, what it is. No, it not, has nothing to do with Alzheimer's. Um, because of my ear is what the problem is. It may, you know, having an ear infection can be really tiring. If you don't, you know, if I have an, an infection of any kind, I'm not hesitant to get out. I am I like getting out. Like, I drive the dog for an hour all through the mountains, and she barks her head off in my ears. It's amazing that I'm not deaf. 
And um, I walk her every day. For that is great, but that's not really getting out. That's taking the dog for a ride in the car. I mean, <laughs> that's not, I, I mean, that is getting out of the house, but it's not exactly what I'm talking about. Hmm. You mean like... It's like getting out of your comfort zone, which, you know, you seem even more hesitant to do than in the past. Because I don't have any energy. It has nothing to do with my desire to be held hold it up in my house I walk my dog every day I drive her in the car every day I go to the grocery store all the time I have company a lot of the time um, it's not it's not like I'm not participating I don't have a lot to do except care for my animals I have children who don't need me to care for them anymore in fact the she was on the other foot and that they hover a little bit over me and like, Mom, is everything okay? Do you need anything? I mean, I'm not, I'm not the um, mother I used to be. And I'm not the, you know, I'm getting older. I'm 60 years old. But most people only think I'm 45 <laughs> because I have really good skin. And also <laughs> I have... I have the muscle makeup of an elite power athlete. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> According to 23andMe, I have, and I, and I don't even need them to tell me that. I just know I'm a super strong female. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, all that is true. Um, maybe we should stop here. What do you think? You got anything else uh you think we you should uh, bring up in this episode? I just maybe people might want to know that I want to buy a camper that I can. <laughs> what <laughs> this is like Craigslist now? Yeah. Hey, if you got a camper, uh, that's inexpensive. It's really nice and cheap. And <laughs> I want to drive cross country. Has its own bathroom. Yeah. Hot tub. <laughs> no, I don't like hot tubs, honey. But it ha I want. I'm. I'm looking for a camper that's inexpensive or free. All right. If you got a camper, call Bella. <laughs> no, don't, 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 don't. All right. Bye. Bye.